Hi everyone. On this video, I'd like to talk about what are the conditions that might make a potential wave function acceptable. And we'll see a number of examples after we go through the criteria for an acceptable wave function. The first criteria is that the wave function must be single valued. So that means that uh, at no place along the range of the function that we're considering can the function have two values. What are some examples of, of functions that would not work? A square root would not work because it has both a positive and a negative solution. An inverse sine, for instance, like an arc sine or an arctan, or uh, arctan, those are examples of functions that uh, have multiple values for a given variable x. Specifically, uh, to give you an example of uh, that shows you that arctan is not single valued, the arctan of 1 can be equal to pi over 4, and it can be also equal to 5 pi over 4 and 9 pi over 4, over 4. So that means that since these two functions, the, all, all of these different functions are multi-valued, they're not going to be acceptable wave functions. Now the next criteria is that wave functions be continuous over the range, uh, the, over the domain that we're considering. Over the domain considered. An example of this might be the function 1 over x from negative 1 to positive 1. If you're familiar with that particular function, you know that on in this area over here, where x is going this way, the function looks like that, but then over here in the negative direction, the function goes like that. And so there's a big discontinuity right here along the y-axis. So that that function with that domain is not going to work. So we'll put a big red X over that to indicate that that function is not continuous. Now the next criteria is that the function be square integrable, meaning that if you square the function and integrate over the domain, it should be, uh, the answer should be finite. So let's see uh, a few examples of functions and domains and determine whether or not they are acceptable. The first example that we're going to see is e to the negative x. All right, if you are, if you remember back to what that function looks like if you plot it, if the uh, x coordinate goes that way, then e to the negative x goes something like that. And as it approaches infinity, it asymptotically becomes closer and closer to zero. So that's the function we're looking at right now. Hopefully you know that this particular function is single valued. And if you didn't know that, you could go find some plotting software and verify. Otherwise, uh, you just may have to use your mathematical intuition to determine whether or not it's single valued or multi valued. Also, you can plot it to see if it's got any discontinuities. And if you know about this function, you've seen it before, then you know that it's continuous over the range. Yeah, and the range that we're looking at is from zero to infinity. The final criteria is to determine whether it's square integrable. So to do that, first I'm gonna square the function. e to the negative x squared just happens to be e to the negative two x, and that's because when you raise an exponent to another power, you just multiply the exponents. And then I'm gonna integrate over this range from zero to infinity, e to the negative 2x dx. Now when I find this antiderivative, it should be negative 1 half e to the negative 2x evaluated at the boundaries, 0 and infinity. So now I plug in those boundaries, negative 1 half e to the negative 2 times infinity. This whole expression is actually going to go away. 
e to the negative infinity is zero. And then I subtract negative one half e to the negative two times zero for the other boundary. And this e expression just goes to one. The negatives cancel out and I get an answer of one half. That is a finite number. So therefore, this function should uh, be just fine for uh, a for an acceptable wave. But now let's consider the same function over a different interval from negative infinity to positive infinity. Let's do this now, changing the boundaries e to the negative 2x dx. This becomes just the same antiderivative Now this first term is just exactly the same, negative one half e to the negative two times infinity, and this just becomes zero. But then we start to run into problems over here because we get negative, negative one half e to the negative two times negative infinity, which is going to become positive two infinity. And e raised to the positive two infinity is going to be a problem. So this particular domain is not going to be square integrable. But this domain up here is just fine. So that's okay. All right, let's see one more example. Let's consider this function over the range one to positive infinity. Now, uh, we were using this as an example of a discontinuous function up above, but that was when the domain contained the origin, contained zero. But this is a different domain, so maybe we'll be able to make it work. Um, over, this, over this domain, it is single-valued. There's only one solution over this domain. It is also continuous. So now we just need to verify whether it's square integrable. So let's first square it. it becomes 1 over x squared integrated from 1 to infinity. And we can write this in a way that makes it a little bit easier on us, x to the negative 2 power. And now when I find this integral, I raise the power by 1 and then divide by the number I raised it to, evaluated at the boundaries 1 and infinity. And so now when I plug in those values, I get negative infinity to the negative 1 power, which is just going to be 0 subtracted from negative 1 to the negative 1 power. And that's just going to become positive 1. So believe it or not, this function over that range, over that domain rather, is acceptable. 